Hey Frontline fans, welcome back to Comic Frontline and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to do that all-important comic book review so you, the fans, can make a decision on what comic books to buy. And today, guys, we're talking about a big one here. This is Civil War II, issue number one. Now, this has been in the works for a very long time. This is a very highly anticipated event. People are looking for a Marvel event that really matters. And now, recently, we just got the word of Marvel Now coming back based off of the events that happened in this title. Now, this book is written by Brian Michael Bendis, and the artwork is done by David Marquez. The artwork in this book is absolutely gorgeous. They went all out this time for Marvel. They charge $6 for this book, but you get a nice kind of like... Uh, cardboard cover which is really nice it's kind of like embroidered or whatnot um, the artwork is top quality the pages are a little bit better David Marquez's artwork is absolutely second to none here it is perfect everything about this book when you look at it is gorgeous the two page spreads are absolutely nice uh, we get to see facial expressions that really capture the moments in the book check out this page with all the uh, with Thor and all the Inhumans and all the other characters in here. The battle scenes are just absolutely perfect. They're explosive. The colors pop in here. It's just an awesome book to look at. Uh, and I miss Dave Marquez's artwork on Invincible Iron Man. But with this book, you pretty much feel like it almost is an Iron Man book. Check out these facial expressions. Look at the emotion. You can feel it in the eyes. Uh, in this book. It's just so gorgeous. So, now that I praise the artwork, let's recap the story. Let's talk about it. And, uh, and I'll give you my final thoughts. Now, here's the part of the uh, portion of the review where there are spoilers. So, if you don't want to be spoiled, please re read your copy first, then come back and see me. And, guys, please, let's keep the discussion going. Leave your comments below, and let's talk about Civil War II, because this was a good book this time around. Okay, in this issue, we wind up seeing, uh, really, the story of Ulysses. We get to see how the Inhumans find him, um, how he basically sees the future, and uh, we wind up seeing our Avengers... Uh, in humans, the X-Men, and everybody else kind of save the world against this galactic disaster uh, that is happening here. They all team up and everything is all hunky-dory. That's basically how the story actually starts off. And in the room, we wind up seeing uh, all of the teams celebrate uh, this great victory. And once Tony Stark does the what he calls is the greatest speech known to man, uh, all the other heroes come together and they want to try to find out, well, in humans, how did you find out that this threat was going to happen? And so that's when this book accidentally, uh, actually uh, introduces Ulysses and you find out kind of like his inhuman power, how he can see these visions and how he's been helping the Inhumans and Medusa has been taking him under his under her wing. Medusa again is absolutely gorgeous here. This is the way you draw that character, that that crazy like hair and whatever it is, and and just everything about this book just visually is stunning. Uh, so we wind up seeing Jean Grey trying to read his mind so the others can actually see kind of what he sees, but we find out that it's kind of a blank slate. Now, right away, Carol, Dan uh, Carol Danvers is on this wagon of getting Ulysses on the team because she's trying to make things, uh, stop things before they actually happen. And we get to see this speech by Tony Stark uh, and saying, you know, this is not the right thing to do. You know, what do we do? Do we arrest the person before the event actually happens? Or do we wait until the event happens and then we take care of the person? He's like, this is just not the right thing to do. And uh, right away, Carol and Tony have a disagreement or pretty much about this whole situation. So they kind of go on their own separate ways. Now, this is when the book actually ties into the Civil War Zero issue. Uh, Ulysses has this vision, and it is the actual vision, if you didn't see it or read it, of the Zero issue of Civil War, when you see Rhodey, Ulysses, Captain Marvel, She-Hulk go into this big battle 
with uh, Thanos. And we wind up seeing She-Hulk and Rhodey get severely injured here. We wind up seeing that Tony gets the call and we find out that Rhodey is now dead. He is no longer alive in the Marvel Universe. Whether it sticks or not, I'm not sure, but it's he is dead. And Tony is just livid about it. He sees the armor. He sees that it's destroyed. There's no way he feels that anything could have penetrated this armor. Now, earlier in the book, there was some good conversation between Rhodey and Tony. And it was like, Rhodey was like, hey, man, you know, he's like, you're giving me armor from the late 80s. You know, I don't have the $4 billion equipment. So it's kind of like you got to think that Tony Stark here is sitting there going, what? What happened here? So right away, Tony goes and he's just like, what happened? He's like freaking out. You see the expression on his face. And the next thing you wind up seeing as he pulls the curtain aside, he sees Captain Marvel sitting there and Jennifer Walters is in the hospital bed. In the Zero Issue, she got severely injured by Thanos as well. And you get to see her lying there. And it's funny, me and Jay right here on Comic Frontline, we're having this this exact conversation thinking, who do you think is going to be the one that dies in this book? And we were sitting there thinking about it. And I was like, oh, Rhodey's the obvious choice. Oh, he's like, ah, it's Jennifer Walters. And I'm like, if Jennifer Walters dies, I'm going to die. She's my favorite Marvel female character. And you see her and you find out that she's alive. But she's in this coma. We're not sure if she's going to wake up. Uh, you know, she might not ever walk again. The only person that can really help her is Bruce Banner. And we don't know where the fuck Bruce Banner is. And I'm sitting there going, come on now. So the next thing you wind up seeing is that once the whole story is explained with Thanos and everything, um, we see that Tony and Carol have this conversation. And he's like, I told you not to use Ulysses. I told you this was going to happen. He's like, how could you be so stupid? And and Carol's like, he's not, you know, you're not the only one he's loved. And she's like, I'm sorry. And the next thing you wind up seeing is like, well, where the fuck is Thanos? And Thanos is on the bottom of the ground. So fine, he leaves. And the next thing you wind up seeing is Jennifer Walters wakes up. And so at this point in the comic book, I'm sitting here going, oh, thank God, Jen, you're alive. You know, and she and she has this these words to Carol. And she sits there and she goes... She goes, you know, Jennifer, she's like, fight, fight for the future because she was on board with Captain's, uh, Captain Marvel's sign. And the next thing you wind up seeing is that she winds up going flatlined. And, and you just hear that at the end. And it's just like, everybody out, get the paddles. And they're like, what's that going to do? We might get gamma radiation. And Carol is just sitting there crying her eyes out at the end while freaking Captain or um, Iron Man sits there and just flies away. And I was just like, oh my God. And I was so emotional. I was so teared up just like Captain Marvel because I love fucking Jennifer Walters. Sorry for all the cursing, but it I just got so emotional with this book. And I'm just like, please no, Jen. Please don't die. She's not dead yet. They don't. It's it's not confirmed that she's dead. But I was just sitting there going, "Oh my god, guys! If you were pissed off at Marvel because of them doing this whole Marvel Now thing, just like I was, fine. But if you have a chance to read this story, this story was really good. The, the zero issue was really good because it dove on the players that were going to be in the story." Now this really kicks off this story, and it was heavy, and I really enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed this in the original Civil War introduction. This was an awesome read. I was so emotional all the way around. You feel the rift already starting to divide between the characters, and it starts with Iron Man, and then it goes to Captain Marvel, and it is insane, and it's so emotional, even though there wasn't really much action in here. It's if you care for these characters and you care for the relationships of these characters, this is going to hit you hard. And this is what Marvel has been lacking, the connection of the characters in the Marvel Universe. This is what makes the Marvel Universe so good. And now I see while Brian Michael Bendis' all his other titles have stalled and sucked ass because he's put all his heart and all his emotion 
at least so far into the first issue of this book. It was a masterpiece, and I truly enjoyed it here, and I can't wait to see what happens. Now, my only fear is that it's going to get dragged out, or it's going to stall. It's going to get boring like some of the other Marvel events. But nevertheless, I'm not judging it on what could happen. I'm judging it on what happens right now. And I give this book a 5 out of 5 stars. Now you can hear my passion here because this is how I feel towards Marvel. If comics were written like this all the time, just like DC Rebirth titles were written like this last week, we would have some great books on our hands. You know, so this book here, this one, 5 out of 5 stars for me. Guys, tell me in the comments below. Again, keep the discussion going on what you thought of Civil War issue number 2. Our Civil War 2 issue number one. And fans, as always, thank you for watching Comic Frontline. Sorry for the lengthy review. Just very passionate. Don't forget to check out all the other Frontliners reviews here. And fans, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. Again, thanks for watching. Take care, guys. See you soon. Bye.